Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is my bite-sized run, which is aimed at those of you who want to progress through this game without every build taking weeks to complete, but still have an awesome looking factory. We currently have this second hub online, which is being supplied by tractors, which currently <laughs> seem to be uh, somewhere else. Um, but yeah, th look, they are driving over there, so there's definitely tractors involved. Um, and they are drawing from a lot of local production facilities. But this hub is actually making everything up into including modular heavy frames as well as... Uh, sorry, heavy modular frames as well as computers. That means we have everything unlocked for trains, more advanced belts, power facilities. And last but not least, we can fly now. We have a little hoover pack which we can use to... Well, hoover around. Um... But it will take a little while to unlock all that. And at this point you will probably want to start unlocking some alternate recipes as well if you haven't done so. Uh, considering each of those alternate recipes takes 10 minutes to unlock. And all those uh, modules that you want to unlock also take quite a bit of time to get done. Uh, not to mention the actual production of the heavy modular frames on the computers. You're going to have a little bit of time in your hands. Which we are again going to make sure we use to the fullest extent in order to plan for the next phase of the game. The problem with these alternate recipes is that the result is random, but they also tend to be pretty good. Some are better than others, but yeah, you probably still are going to want to use them. That in turn means that in order for my bite-sized guides to actually be still be useful to you, we're going to need a different approach because it doesn't really make sense at this point to just keep using the basic recipes. Probably not a surprise, but that is where blueprints once again come in. I think it makes a lot of sense at this point in the game to start designing some more complex building blocks that will allow you to really scale up your production quickly while still allowing enough flexibility to make use of ultimate recipes. There is a lot of people who give up at this point because you need so much resources to get any meaningful production going that it can take dozens of hours to set up a next level facility. With some thoughtfully designed blueprints, I think we should be able to cut that time a lot shorter. When making a set of building blocks, you'll need to think a little bit about what you want your factory to look like and how you want it to operate. For example, as you know by now, probably, uh, I like my belts beneath machines. I want my power organized neatly, I want my asphalt and concrete looks, and I like some steel accents. So all of that is going to factor into the design of the blueprints. But we also need to make sure they fit together. So we need to make sure that the machines are all at the same height, at least if we want them to connect to each other. We need to make sure the belts are organized in a similar fashion throughout the building blocks, etc, etc. So we are going to set that up in such a way that we adhere to all of those rules. Now, when it comes to the actual design, uh, because I want plenty of room beneath my um, my, my buildings, we also need to be, make sure we actually have enough room for our buildings inside of the blueprint. We do need to make sure that we don't build it up too high. It's really tempting to kind of leave like four or five uh, wall spaces uh, in terms of room beneath our facilities but some of the facilities can actually be pretty high so um, we have apparently a total room of seven wall heights within the blueprint designer if you try to build another one on top of it you will get an error message saying you're outside of the scope um, and that is of course be, uh, including the floor that I have built here so we might actually be able to include one more wall section if I didn't include a floor but I do want a floor and uh, so we'll have to deal with the seven that we get so I think it makes sense to have maybe three spaces worth of room beneath our facility and then build a floor here setting up a basic building block like this will actually allow you to make sure you have it a base to build from literally now you might not want a corridor like this for every single part of your facility but it's easier to take the walls out than to put them back in and i also recommend leaving the top floor over here and just empty because you probably are going to want to build in some walls or um something else on top of here that that will need to align with something else at some point but it's probably safer to build that in separately rather than already putting it in every single building block on top you're going to want to basically have a simple layout of different types of constructors assemblers uh, smelters foundries etc etc just just keep the layout simple i do recommend kind of fine-tuning the amount of buildings to a mark 3 belt 
if only because at this point you're probably going to have more than enough steel to work with so scaling it down you could definitely do that if you want to kind of save on resources um, but scaling it up at this point is probably going to be a little bit ambitious in terms of how much resources that is actually going to cost you of course it is completely up to you whatever you want to do uh, but generally speaking given the size of the blueprints the maximum size that we're going to be able to handle uh, generally speaking you're going to be good with mark 3 type of uh, belts speaking of belts look how awesome we can set this up when we raise the belts off the floor now um these split oh sorry these splitters are actually attached to a lift and normally that would give some clipping issues well technically it still does but we won't see any clipping issues because the lift is completely hidden by the splitter now we basically have it set up in such a way that we have a resource coming in from one side and which will be going into this specific splitter over here it will split in this case the ore to two different sides and then we have the output being collected in the middle again and that will go on this belt all the way through and go out on the other side um, now i, I kind of like this type of simple setup so we always have all the resources coming in on one side and going out on the other side for the simple reason that that kind of makes sure you don't get too complicated uh, in an outflow and, and backtracking and things like that going on in your larger facilities but of course you can make variations on that as well what i also really like about this type of setup because we erased everything off the floor it's really easy to get around and should we decide decide at some point that we don't want mark 3 belts after all but we want to upgrade them to mark 4 or you know downgrade them because we need the resources or whatever um it's it's very trivial to just go past past everything and make sure we, we up or downgrade whatever we need now you can also see i actually incorporated the power into the floor um opinions will differ uh, uh, on whether or not this is actually good looking uh, we don't actually need these sides of the um splitter so i don't think it's it's necessarily a problem that is wire is hanging in front of it it shouldn't be clipping too much over here as well although this is probably the most problematic part so if that really bothers you uh, you can work around that if you want but the idea behind this is actually that the power goes straight up through the floor like as vertical as we can get it straight into the machine now i think even though this is completely clipping through the floor when it comes to wires it's not that weird in an industrial environment to have like wires um kind of melded into the concrete so i don't think this is actually bad looking but of course if you want to do it differently then by all means do that but i think it's very nice and tidy this way we have all the wiring and all the belts under the floor now obviously you're going to need a different blueprint for every type of production facility so over here we have a very simple layout for constructors you can opt to kind of min max this and try to fit in as many machines as you, as you can I actually opted here for a more um, I think nice looking layout with a little bit of room between the machines so they don't clip as much and well generally speaking um, six per block should be more than enough as well but of course you can do uh, whatever you want you can always make variations depending on how many machines you want in a block so you could make a block with eight one with six one with four whatever you want um, but there are a couple of things to consider when making these so as you can see for example this one over here is quite similar to the one with the smelters with a little difference that I actually opted to bring this belt a little bit lower so there's less clipping going on in terms of the more um, uh, larger items that might be on the belt that could be kind of clipping through the belts in the previous uh, layout although uh, there's no one ever going to see that but still um, I have the um, oh, for the, the electricity is going to be in different places the power and well generally speaking this one is pretty similar However, once you get to the more complicated machines with different inputs, you will actually have to be a little bit more creative. Um, you could actually still have one row on each side, but you would have to alternate the locations in terms of where you build them. I don't necessarily think that looks good. It gets really messy in terms of belts, and I, I like keeping it simple and, and really organized um, because of that. So I decided to not have a row of these, but actually have a more vertical line compared to the orientation that we had before. Now this is very simple still, so inputs on one side, output on the other side, and the same side as before. Once it gets to the logistics of this, 
I think it still looks really nice and organized and I really, 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 really like the fact that we have everything off the floor and get so easy to walk around underneath this once we start placing these. Now, as you can see, we actually have one input coming in on this side and that will alternate. It's uh, better to see if I get below here. This will alternate between these splitters over here and then we have the other input coming in on the other side and doing the exact same thing but in the reverse so that means that once we have the inputs for our assemblers in this case simply put one on this belt one on the other and everything will take care of itself keep in mind that once you have a blueprint for the assemblers you can easily make a blueprint for the foundries as well by loading up the blueprint for the assemblers replacing the assemblers with foundries and then fixing the output because remember the output on these foundries is a little bit offset compared to where it is on the assemblers um, I actually really like recentering the outputs uh, with these, this little curved belt we have over here uh, and this is really just being lazy because of course if I would have to connect this exactly to the, the place where the output is um, I would actually have to move every belt that we had for the um, assembler so Again, just being efficient and reusing a blueprint. Now, uh, as you can see, everything going on below here is exactly the same. There is a downside by doing this, of, of doing this, uh, for the simple reason that foundries are a lot smaller than the assembler. So you could argue that I could actually fit about twice as many foundries on a blueprint as compared to what I'm doing now. But we don't need that many foundries. I think this is probably fine. But again, it's completely up to your own preference. Of course, we're also going to need a blueprint for a manufacturer, and I think this is where this type of blueprint really starts to shine. I mean, there's so much to set up with a simple manufacturer that having to redo that several times over is just really annoying, in my opinion, and this makes it very convenient to do so. So we have four different inputs, as you can see, nothing special really going on, but I love how the belting works out below so we have all those four different inputs we're actually bringing in them on the side so we have those nice side connecting wall belts over here and yeah just this just looks so neat and organized and if you do this on the ground floor it always becomes very messy or it easily becomes messy and this is just very very straightforward and easily set up we also have again the power being brought below uh, it's over there so all we need to do is just connect this up to power and it will work we have the output ready to go yeah it's it's not a complicated type of blueprint but it's very very convenient to have one set up one type of blueprint that i haven't seen mentioned that much is actually what i would like to call a buffer block if you're going to build a modular factory where you have or you're probably going to be producing several different types of items i actually highly recommend to have a blueprint setup that you can use not only to store your outputs but actually also store your intermediate products or at least buffer them a little bit so you have easy access to all those different types of resources that you're producing basically turning your factory into something that kind of looks like a mall or a hub or whatever you want to call it with easy access to a lot of different products now in order to do that you're going to have to have some storage and i'm doing that here with industrial storage containers that kind of sink through the floor i've done that before in my hubs as well i actually like putting an output belt so you can easily see what's on it but if you go down where it really starts to shine again is the organization of the belts because we're using the um the um mounts the ceiling mounts that's the word i was looking for and because we can now easily run belts across the roof and again raise them off from the floor nothing gets in the way it's very easy to connect a block like this up to the production facility you have elsewhere and basically that's like effortless um, storage that you will have and because this belt is has this has an in and output belt there's actually no delay in terms of uh, throughput I actually also put in a mark 3 belt here but you can easily upgrade this because you can e easily reach all these belts to mark 4 if that's what you want and that's what you need so generally speaking this is a very simple straightforward block but I think it's a one that's typically underappreciated and good to have in your arsenal and then for now, last but not least, the truck blueprint. Now, um, or at least I, I would like to call this the truck receiving station. And that's exactly what it's going to be doing. It's very nice to have a single truck station on a 
4x4 platform like this because it's very easy for the truck to kind of drive in here, unload and then drive out here. It has a lot of turning range like that. You're also going to need to set up a lot of belts if you want to use trucks a lot. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So we have two output belts, one on the left hand and one on the right hand. Again, just raising them off the floor to get them out of the way. And if you connect other um, parts of your facility to this, other blocks to this, you can easily keep running these uh, things either through the walls or on the ceiling if that's what you need to do in order to get where you need to go. Of course, you also need to supply fuel for your trucks. And I prefer doing that typically uh, on the top level because it gets really messy if you want to do that in here. But of course, it's a simple matter of just deleting this lift if that's what you want to do. Um, but as you can see, the lift actually goes up. Let me fly up here. There we go. Uh, this looks a bit funky, but that's because I haven't actually reloaded yet and it's clipping through. But if you use blueprints like this um, and you reload your, your game, you save and you reload, um, all the um, lifts will actually be in their correct place. I'm not entirely sure why they haven't fixed that yet. It's probably more difficult than I know. But um, yeah, don't worry about this clipping through. This will not be here once you reload your game just once. Um, there's a reason that there's only a floor hole over here because... It tends to vary from which direction your fuel is going to come, what type of fuel you're going to be delivering, etc, etc. So um, I, I recommend not setting anything up that you might have to remove later on anyway. You might be wondering why I'm putting so much effort in getting the ground floor looking organized and nice. And not really putting any effort into the details of the top floor. I mean, there's just machines here. It looks very clean. So if that's the look you're going for, you're kind of done. Um, and, but I also see a lot of other content creators making this more interesting. And of course, from a content making perspective, that's really good. But I actually don't think from a gameplay perspective, that's what you be, sh should be doing. So that's why I'm not showing you it here. What I think you should be doing when you're making blueprints and you will actually want to dress up your facility is first build the facility and then either just make the details by hand or still use blueprints but use separate blueprints in order to make that because the thing is with these building blocks is that if you dress them up too much they might actually clash if you kind of um, um, face them in different directions from each other um, a long story short it gets really messy really fast if you put a lot of details in that because those details might not work everywhere in your facility so Please join me in the next episode after this, where I'll actually go through building a facility with this um, and showing you how you can dress that up and kind of also build your facility step by step using these building blocks um, so that you can still do it in a bite-sized fashion. Because again, we're not trying to build a major facility over tens of dozens or hours. No, we're trying to build a facility uh, one evening at a time in such a way that you're actually still getting progress. So again, if you enjoyed this and you're looking forward to seeing how that looks, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment um, and make sure to join me in the next one.